Hi, and welcome back to the Rail series. In this episode, we're going to learn how to use the collection select method. And what that's going to allow us to do is to have a new form element that will have a, a drop down so that you can select different items. And in this episode, we're going to do what's called a static version of it. And we're going to create a dynamic version in our next episode. Uh, so in this one, the what it's going to look like, we'll go to the form page to see it. We have our company, tax, and salesperson, but I want to mark if this invoice has been paid or not. And so we're going to have something right below it that says uh, status, and the person can click, and it'll have a drop down to say if it's paid or if it's still pending. And so that's what we're going to build out in this episode. So coming back to the application, let's build this on a branch. So we'll do get checkout. B and we'll say adding selection. I will come over here on the left hand side and we're gonna come to app views and then go down to invoices to form. Okay and come down to the bottom right above where we have our control group for the submit and we're gonna put our new element right here. So hit the tab, and we'll want to do another control group. So we'll do class control group to match everything above it. And then right after that, we're going to do another F label. There we go. F label. And now there's a few different things you can do. Uh, as you've seen above where we did F label, we put a symbol associated with it. And that works great if we're doing things such as tax or salesperson. But what we're wanting to do here is we're going to be calling something. We're going to be calling a new uh, column in the database that we haven't created yet, but we will. And it's going to say something like status type. But we don't want to say status type. Uh, in our form we just want to say status and to do that instead of passing a symbol you just put put it inside a string and so we'll say f dot label status and then we'll just do class control label that's how you pass in a, a kind of like a statically typed kind of value there okay so we have that and now we'll just give our controls so div class controls and now this is where we're gonna do our F select and so that's this is kind of the new part so we'll go F dot select and then put in parentheses and we're gonna do status type and like I already said we've not created this yet so we're gonna have to do a database migration to make this work and we'll say options underscore for select start a set of parentheses and then we're gonna do two left starting brackets and then a string and we're gonna say paid and paid again and so all that's doing if you're not familiar with how this works it's essentially like a key value kind of pair where uh, one is what's going to show up to the user and the other is what's going to get put inside the database. So it Rails is nice because it lets you uh, have some custom options. So say we wanted this to be uh, something like invoice paid but we only wanted the other option to just say paid then we could do that. But I actually typically I like to make them be the same. So we'll do paid and then we'll do another set of brackets and we'll say pending in this one. And there's no reason why I'm doing capital except for the fact that I usually do those in these enterprise type applications. Okay and you see that I closed off the with two sets of ending parentheses or brackets because I put them over there and then we're gonna end the parentheses 
and we have to do two ending parentheses because we have to close off this one. If you don't put in the correct number, you will get errors and you'll have to come back and fix it. So I believe that's correct though. So there and close off this div and then close off this div. Sometimes Nitrix likes to have its own ideas on where that should be. Okay, so this is everything we need from a form side, but if we ran the, uh, the server right now and actually went and tried to go look at that, we would get an error. And the error is because we do not have something called status type in our database. And so what we need to do is create what's called a migration and add that column to the invoice database. And so that's what we're gonna do now. Okay, and to create this migration, this is something you wanna definitely be careful with because if you do a bad migration, it can take a little while to wind it back down. So uh, let me come down here and close this out and we'll come down to the console. And so all you have to do is first make sure you're in the root of your directory. So you can do something like hitting uh, PWD and yes, we're right there, which is good. I actually always like to stay in the root and then just work through the directories on the command line because you want to make sure that if you are running migrations or anything like that that you're not trying to do it from within one of the directories. So it's just kind of a best practice for that. So in order to do this migration we're going to give a set of commands and we're going to say rails g which is short for generate and migration and we want to do add Sorry, we only want the first letter capitalized. So we want to add status type to invoices. And invoices, even though in the model is singular, here we're going to make it plural. And then we want to do status type and say that this is going to be a string. Okay, and this should work, hit return, and we'll see if this was all entered correctly. Yes, that all worked, so that's good. And to make sure it worked, we're gonna come down to our DB directory and then click on Migrate. And you can see the these are four different migrations we've done up to this point. And the bottom one's always your latest one, so click on that, and you can see that just by creating this one, or typing in this one command, it created this file for us. So it says add status type to invoices and it automatically knew we we're talking about the invoices table and that we want to create a new column called status type and we want it to be a string. So this is all perfect. Now to make this actually work, remember we have to do rake db migrate, hit return and then it'll perform the migration for us and what that will do is it'll make this status type actually work. So now let's start up the Rails server and we should be able to start entering in a status type and it should have our collection sort on here. So let's go to port 3000 and then we'll go to the invoices page and hit new and there you go. Look, there's our new status and you can see it says status even though we said status type and we can make it paid or pending so let's create a new one so go back to the 10th and we'll go with XYZY electric I'm not sure why I called it that and tax rate of 3.4 salesperson Jordan and we're gonna say that this is pending hit submit and that was all created correctly now if you notice right here it's not showing anything and that's because we have to add that into the view which will be the last thing we do in this video so we can get out of this form and come up to our in our views and invoices and then go to index and to add it it's extremely easy we just let's just copy this table heading and we want to say status we can call this anything we want and now here right below salesperson we're going to do the same thing except the difference now we have to do invoice and then we have to call this by its actual name in the database so this is going to be status type so we'll save that come back here hit refresh 
and there we go we have status but it's not actually printing out anything in the database and I know exactly why that is uh, with Rails 4 the new version of Rails it has a new rule that says we have to put in strong parameters into our controller and this is something that uh, I forget to do pretty regularly and you may or may not uh, do the same thing and what all it means is here on the bottom of the file they have what's called our strong parameters which is invoice underscore params and what this says is you only allow these items to be passed in through forms so that's the reason why when we did it earlier it didn't work so we need to add in status type hit save now we're, it's not going to know what we entered in before because it blocked that from happening so we actually have to go to edit Let's change this to pending. And there we go. So that's working properly. We could come here, have it as paid. And you may notice uh, one thing right here where it actually by default is almost forcing you to pick paid or unpaid. There is a way around that. Um, for something like a status, you probably wouldn't want that. You'd probably want to have always have one or the other but say you did have something where you didn't want to have a default value so uh, say we didn't want paid or pending we just wanted a blank one the way that that would work is we'd come back and we'd go into our form so go to views invoices form and just scroll down to this options for select and all you have to do is come not to the very end but in between those last two parentheses and just do a comma and then do start of a corollary brackets and include blank true end with curly brackets hit save come back to the app and hit refresh and there you go now by default it's always going to have a blank and then it'll let you choose paid or pending. And that's completely up to you if you wanna have that option as a default, but uh, that's something that I definitely use depending on the type of data I'm entering. Okay, well you now know how to use options for select and how to pass in kind of statically typed values and names to list on a form, how to include those, how to use strong parameters, how to do a database migration. So in a pretty short period of time, you actually did quite a bit of work and it's showing up in the app. So uh, great job. And please let me know if you have any questions at all in the comment section. And in the next video, we're going to learn how to take actual database calls and queries and have those show up inside of a select statement. So I'll see you then.